Welcome to First State Farm to My Plate. My name is Nancy Mears and I am an Extension Agent located at the Carville Research and Education Center in Georgetown, Delaware in Sussex County. Today we're going to talk about Delaware agriculture, the UD campus where I work, and why you should eat more fruits and vegetables, preferably ones that come from Delaware. This program was created by one of our dietetic interns, one of the many ways we involve students in our work with the community. If you haven't already, please print out the handout packet that was emailed to you. We will be referring to these as we go. Cooperative Extension is the outreach arm of the University of Delaware. The university does not discriminate and welcomes people of all races, ethnicities, and abilities to participate in our programs and workshops. We use a variety of ways to educate Delawareans. We use direct and indirect education classes, such as the one you're in today. We are also very active on different social media platforms. Please follow us and like what we're doing. You never know, you might even see yourself. Today, we will learn about Delaware agricultural history and the current status, the importance of fruits and vegetables, produce food safety basics, local produce availability, handling and storage, and some tips for a home fruit and vegetable garden. A very long time ago, Delaware grain and produce producers gained abil the ability to reach markets in Europe, the Mediterranean, and the Caribbean through the use of sail power and steamships. The Delaware Railroad, which was completed in 1859, stimulated a market-driven agricultural economy. Today, Delaware is a food shed for the eastern United States. A third of the population of the United States live within about an eight-hour drive of Delaware. These people live in cities like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. There are approximately 2,500 farms in Delaware with up to 510,000 acres in farmland. That's about 40% of Delaware. Agriculture is a big business in Delaware. Kent and Sussex counties are also producing a lot of fruits and vegetables. Delaware also has some vibrant farm to school programs. These provide market opportunities for Delaware farmers and nutritional enhancements and educational opportunities for Delaware students. From taste tests in the cafeteria and nutrition education activities in the classroom, to farm visits and school garden harvest parties, schools, farms, communities, and organizations in all 50 states, Washington DC and the US territories take part in farm to school celebrations. In Delaware, lima beans are considered the cornerstone crop of the vegetable processing industry. Lima bean processing brought over $7 million to Delaware. Pictured here is Dr. Emily Ernest, an extension associate for vegetable crops at the University of Delaware. She's showing off a large variety of pole lima beans in one of our greenhouses in Georgetown. Emily is just one of over 50 full-time employees who work at the UD Carville Research and Education Center. The Carville Center, or better known as the Agricultural Substation, was first established in 1941. Currently, the facility has 26,000 square feet of office, lab, and classroom space, and it's surrounded by 344 acres of agricultural research land and adjacent is the Lasher Laboratory, a world-class poultry diagnostic lab. The facility staff is responsible for conducting cooperative extension and research programs in the areas of agronomic and vegetable crop production, farm and use safety, 4-H youth development, family and consumer sciences, poultry research and diagnostic programs, ornamental horticulture, water quality and nutrient management, expanded food and nutrition programs, and volunteer programs. The master gardeners, the master food educators, and our 4-H leaders, and we will also have a new volunteer program coming soon, the well-connected community volunteers that will assist us in the areas of nutrition, school and community gardens, mindfulness, substance misuse, and worksite wellness. All of these programs are aimed 
at improving the quality of life through the transfer of research-based information to the consumer. The University of Delaware Cooperative Extension Vegetable Crops Program provides non-biased research-based information for producers, processors, and agribusiness personnel in Delaware, the region, and the nation. The program addresses the needs of commercial producers of fresh market and processing vegetables. Each year, the university conducts variety trials, which helps to inform the industry on the performance of current and newly developed varieties of fruits and vegetables under Delmarva growing conditions, which helps growers choose the best varieties to match growing and marketing needs. Variety trials have recently been conducted on seedless watermelons, lima beans, broccoli, and processing peas and peppers. Other needs are addressed with applied research and demonstration programs in plant nutrition and innovative cultural practices. The information and knowledge is disseminated through a wide range of venues, included educational meetings, publications, direct contact, and via our website. Now that we understand why fruits and vegetables are so important to the first state, let's talk about why you need them on your plate. Potassium is a nutrient that many Americans don't get enough of. Which of the following is a good fruit source of this mineral? If you chose all of the above, you're correct. Potassium is important for many reasons. It may help maintain your blood pressure, reduce the risk of developing kidney stones, decrease bone loss, and it can be found in lots of different things, included peaches, cantaloupe, tomatoes, white potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Other sources can include white beans, soybeans, and spinach. Which of these nutrients can you get from eating whole fruits and vegetables? Which of these nutrients can you get from eating whole fruit that is not usually found in juice? If you chose fiber, you're correct. Diverticulosis is when pockets called diverticula form in the walls of your digestive tract. The inner layer of your intestine pushes through weak spots in the outer lining. This pressure makes them bulge out, making little pouches. Most often it happens in your colon, the lower part of your large intestine. What vitamin gives carrots and sweet potatoes their orange color? If you chose vitamin A, you're correct. Beta carotene, a form of vitamin A, gives these foods their orange color and is also good for eye health, the immune system, and reproduction. Last question. Which of these foods is actually a fruit in plant biology? The answer is all of the above. In plant biology, a fruit contains the seeds of a plant, and therefore tomatoes, peppers, squash, and cucumbers are all botanically considered fruits. As you can see, the amounts of fruits and vegetables a person needs depends on both their sex and their age. The amounts shown in the table are appropriate for individuals who get less than 30 minutes per day of moderate physical activity beyond their normal daily activities. Those who are more physically active may be able to consume more while staying within their caloric needs. Based on their nutrient content, vegetables are organized into five subgroups. Dark green vegetables, red and orange vegetables, starchy vegetables, beans and peas, and other vegetables. Vegetable subgroup recommendations are given as amounts to eat weekly. It is not necessary to eat vegetables from each subgroup daily. However, over a week, you should try to consume the amounts listed from each subgroup as a way to reach your daily intake recommendation. Here are some examples of vegetable subgroups. You will find some handouts with all of the information on recommended daily fruit and vegetable intakes. You will also see a handout entitled Knowing Your Spring Greens. This has some great information on different dark green vegetables. Getting fruits and vegetables doesn't have to be complicated. By making half your plate fruits and vegetables, snacking on fruits and vegetables, and eating a variety of different colored fruits and vegetables, you can be sure to reap all the benefits of a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. UD Cooperative Extension advocates for the consumption of all types of fruits and vegetables. This includes fresh, frozen, canned, and that's in water or 100% fruit juice, non-organic and organic alike. We're now going to talk about 
fresh produce availability in Delaware and go over some handling and storage for each of these local fruits and vegetables. Let's start with some produce food safety basics. There are also some handouts for later reference. You want to make sure that you're washing your hands before and after handling fresh fruits and vegetables. You also want to make sure that you're cleaning your sink and cutting boards before and after washing and preparing fresh produce. Wash all fresh fruits and vegetables. Once you cut your fruits and vegetables, you want to make sure that you consume your produce within two hours and that you're refrigerating any leftovers. Local asparagus is available from mid-spring to the start of summer. You shouldn't wash fresh asparagus before you store it. You want to trim the ends and stand asparagus bunches upright in a jar with about an inch of water on the bottom. Cover it with a plastic bag and refrigerate it for up to two days. When you're ready to prepare your asparagus, you want to bend each spear until it breaks naturally, as this will ensure the tender spears without having any waste. Local strawberries are available during a small window from late spring to the start of summer. Strawberries, like most other fruits, are naturally low in fat, sodium, and calories, as well as being cholesterol-free. You want to look for brightly colored plump strawberries with fresh green caps. Refrigerate ripened strawberries for one to two days. You want to make sure that you are rinsing your strawberries in a bowl of cold water to clean them making sure that you're not soaking your strawberries. Remove the leaves and green caps when you're ready to eat them. Radishes are available locally from the end of spring all the way through midfall. Remove radish greens, which are edible, before storing and place in a plastic bag. Refrigerate for up to a week. When you're ready to prepare your radishes, slice off the roots and leaves, wash and pat dry. Radishes can be served whole, they can be sliced or diced, minced, or grated. Blueberries are available through the duration of the summer. They will last up to 10 days in the refrigerator if they're kept dry. Make sure you don't wash your blueberries until you're ready to eat them or use them in a recipe. Remove their stems and wash them in a colander prior to using. Make sure that you remove any blueberries that have been damaged. Blueberries freeze very well. Once you have washed them and dried them, you want to lay them out on a cookie sheet in a single layer and place them in the freezer. Once frozen, you can bag frozen blueberries for storage. Broccoli, like blueberries, is locally available throughout the duration of the summer. You want to look for broccoli that is firm with closed florets, odorless, and has a deep green color. Broccoli can be refrigerated and used within three to five days. Broccoli can also be frozen. You want to make sure that you're cutting washed broccoli into florets and that the stalks are being cut into pieces. Steam them about five minutes, then plunge them into ice water to stop the cooking process. Make sure you're draining them thoroughly and then place them into sealed bags or containers and they can be frozen up to 12 months. Potatoes are a root vegetable available during the entirety of the Delaware summer. Do not store potatoes in the refrigerator or next to onions. Store potatoes in a dry, dark place for up to three months at 45 to 50 degrees. Potato skins are edible, so potatoes can be prepared with or without the skins. Before cooking potatoes, make sure you're scrubbing them under cold water to remove any remaining dirt. You will find fresh cantaloupe in Delaware during the summer and at the start of fall. Cantaloupes are named for the papal gardens of Cantalupo, Italy, where some historians say that this species of melon was first grown. When choosing cantaloupe, you want to make sure that you're choosing fragrant, symmetrical cantaloupes that are heavy for size with no visible bruises and yellow or cream undertone. The stem end should give to a gentle pressure. Store uncut cantaloupes at room temperature for up to one week. Cut melon should be refrigerated in airtight containers for up to five days. Peaches, like cantaloupe, are also available during summer and early fall. Sweet peaches are great to eat with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You want to make sure that you're choosing peaches that have firm, fuzzy skins that yield to a gentle pressure when ripe. Avoid any blemishes. 
Unripe peaches can be stored in a paper bag. Once ripe, they can be stored at room temperature and used within one to two days. Cucumbers in Delaware can be found at the start of summer all the way through midfall. Cucumbers can be stored in a plastic bag for up to one week in the refrigerator. When you're ready to use, make sure that you're cleaning them under cold running water. You might notice that some cucumbers purchased from the grocery store will have a wax on them. This wax is used to help retain moisture during transportation, and it might not come off with water. It's fine to consume this wax, or you can peel it off. Sweet corn, like cucumbers, is available locally from early summer to midfall. Sweet corn was born when a mutation occurred in field corn. This mutation caused the storage area of the seed the endosperm to accumulate with two times more sugar than field corn. Field corn is produced primarily for animal feed and industrial uses such as ethanol, cooking oil, etc. In contrast, sweet corn is produced for human consumption as either a fresh or processed product. Varieties of sweet corn with white kernels are popular down south, while the yellow types are preferred in the plain states. Delawareans seem to like white corn but yellow corn and even bicolored corn, that's ears with white and yellow corn kernels, find their way to dinner tables. What do you prefer? White sweet corn, yellow sweet corn, or the bicolored corn? When choosing sweet corn, you wanna make sure that you're choosing ears with green husks, fresh silk, and tight rows of kernels. Corn can be refrigerated in the husk for use within one to two days. When you're going to prepare corn, you wanna remove the husk immediately before cooking. If corn is unhusks, you can put ears in a plastic bag and refrigerate until prep time. If you despise shucking corn, here's an easy microwave corn hack. You can microwave a husked ear of corn for three to four minutes. Then using a pot holder, remove the corn from the microwave. Cut off about an inch from the stem's end. Next, hold on to the silk and top leaves and shake out the corn. It should come out easily and completely clean. If it doesn't, help it along by squeezing the top and forcing it out. Even if you have to help the corn along, when you remove it from the husk, it will be free of silk and ready to eat. Green beans like sweet corn and cucumbers are available locally from early summer through mid-fall. The majority of Delaware green beans are bush beans as shown in this picture. Select brightly colored green beans that snap easily when bent. Green beans can be refrigerated for up to a week in the refrigerator in a plastic bag. To prepare, wash green beans in cold water before cutting and cooking, and then you wanna make sure you're snipping off both ends. To retain sweetness and crispness, trim beans, but keep them whole. Tomatoes like cucumbers, sweet corn, and green beans are available in Delaware from early summer to mid-fall. Look for tomatoes that are bright in color with a smooth skin. Tomatoes should give a little under pressure, but do not pick ones that are too soft or have obvious bruising. Tomatoes should be stored at room temperature and away from direct sunlight, and they should be used within a few days of picking. When you're ready to eat them, remove green stems before use and rinse them under cold water. Cabbage is locally available for the duration of the summer and fall. Look for cabbage heads that have shiny, compact leaves and that are heavy for their size and free of blemishes. They can be stored in the refrigerator for up to a week in an airtight plastic bag. If you cut a cabbage and are storing just a section, make sure that you cover it tightly with plastic wrap and use within two days. To prepare, move the outer leaves and cut cabbage into pieces and then wash well under running water. Squash becomes available midsummer and can be found locally in early fall. Shown above from left to right is butternut squash, summer squash, and acorn squash. Summer squash are harvested when immature and they have very shiny skins and therefore can only be stored for relatively short periods of time. Winter squash are harvested when mature and when ripened to this stage, fruits of most varieties can be stored for use throughout the winter. Eggplant is found fresh in Delaware markets from midsummer to midfall. Eggplant is actually a cousin to tomatoes, peppers, and potatoes and gets its name from the first varieties of its kind, which were round, white, and egg size. 
Eggplants are now purple, green, white, or striped, pear-shaped, or cylindrical, and can be anywhere from the size of a golf ball to a football. It's best to use eggplant within one day of purchase, but it can be refrigerated for up to four days. They do bruise easily, so make sure that you handle them with care. Cooked eggplant can be refrigerated for three days. Pureed eggplant can be frozen for up to six months with a little bit of lemon juice to prevent any discoloration. Peppers like eggplants are available from midsummer to midfall. In the past several years, the University of Delaware has conducted pepper trials with types that are used for processing, but also types that could be used as a fresh market specialty pepper. Included in the trials were sweet and hot banana types, hot and no heat jalapenos, Italian and pimento peppers, and hot and sweet cherry peppers. Bell peppers should have a thick, firm, and bright glossy skin no matter what color. You want to make sure that you're avoiding peppers that are shriveled or have soft spots. Bell peppers can be refrigerated in a plastic bag and used within five days. Before using, wash and remove the stem and seeds of peppers. When chopping peppers, keep the inside of the pepper facing up against the knife blade. Watermelon, like eggplants and peppers, are available from midsummer to midfall. The first recorded watermelon harvest occurred nearly 5,000 years ago in Egypt. Watermelons are now grown in 96 countries worldwide. Left to right, you will see a yellow flesh melon, a seedless watermelon, and a sweet sugar baby watermelon. Choose symmetrical watermelons with yellowish undersides. Melons should be heavy for their size, and they should be, whole watermelons should be stored at room temperature. Once they're cut, you can refrigerate watermelons in airtight containers and use within five days. Apples are available locally from midsummer to late fall. They are Delaware's most important fruit crop with more than 10.4 million pounds grown annually in the first state. When choosing apples, you want to make sure that they are firm, shiny, smooth skinned with intact stems. They should smell fresh and not musty. Apples can be refrigerated in plastic bags away from strong odored foods. They can be used within three weeks. Pumpkins are available in late summer to late fall. Pumpkins should be stored at room temperature for up to a month, or they can be stored in the refrigerator for up to three months. You should be wrapping cut pumpkins in plastic and refrigerating for up to five days. To prepare pumpkins, make sure you're washing them and cutting them lengthwise, removing and discarding the seeds and excess fiber, and then trimming the skin with a paring knife or peeler if desired. You can also cook them. Sweet potatoes like pumpkin can be found locally from late summer to late fall. You want to make sure that you're selecting sweet potatoes that are small to medium in size with smooth skin and avoiding those with soft spots. Sweet potatoes should be stored in a cool dry place for up to a month. Prior to preparing, make sure that you're scrubbing your sweet potatoes with a vegetable brush under cold water. You can peel sweet potatoes but the skin is edible. You can find a handout called the De Delaware Fresh Market Availability Chart. This will give you the monthly ranges which are included in this presentation. If you really want to save, save money, you can start your own fruit and vegetable garden at home. It's pretty easy and it's a great way to increase your physical activity. Gardening can be accessible to anyone with a sunny space, some seeds, water, fertilizer, and patience. A small garden is best for beginners. Go bigger as your skills increase. Feel free to contact your local Cooperative Extension office to help answer any questions you might have around home fruit and vegetable gardening. Thank you for attending today's session. Please let us know if you have any questions and please take the time to complete our very quick survey. It helps us plan for future programs. Thank you for attending.